The waiver episode is probably the most important episode every week. Who are you going to pick up? Maybe more importantly, who are you willing to drop for these players? We have guys that you need to stash, guys you need to play this week. Make sure you stay tuned, and we'll figure out if a lot of these new hot hot and bothered storylines, are they smoke? Are they fire? Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and enjoy. Foot Clan, before we start today's show, I want to thank Mint Mobile for supporting the podcast Look, after years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by, quote, big wireless. Oh, big wireless. Oh, they, oh, 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 if, we've, <laughs> if we've learned anything, uh, there's always a catch with big wireless. Oh, big wireless. And then I learned about Mint Mobile. And then I, I checked out Mint Mobile, and I learned that it was 15 bucks a month. And I thought, that that's a lie. There's a catch. And then there wasn't one. And then I realized that they are the first company to sell wireless services online only so that you get extra savings. And so they offer premium wireless for 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Uh, it's almost too easy, by the way. You just get the SIM card, you sign up, you activate it, you can keep your phone number. And if you're not happy, they give you a seven-day money-back guarantee. So to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get that plan shipped straight to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash footballers. That's mintmobile.com slash footballers. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, September 21st. Did I wake you up, Jason? You did. Did I spook you a little bit? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've got the in-ear monitors, and I felt like your your intro was in in my soul. Sometimes I don't know how loud it's going to come out, and I'm a little louder today than I thought. You're trying to bring up your... Your compadre here. Try well, to wake him up. Bring him back from Did the- I wake you up, Mike? Can you wake the dead? What does dead may never die? Because <laughs> I'm gone. I've left. I mean, you are you were contractually obligated to show up today. I am. And let me tell you this, guys. Soup's excited about 2022. <laughs> that, that fantasy football season is going to be fantastic. No! no! <laughs> Michael! You, the, so Jamal foot- Williams didn't work out last night. Is no. that what the headline is for our listenership? No. So uh, hot off of the Sunday night loss because of the Clyde edwards alaire fumble in our Dynasty League. No, Jamal Williams did not reach the point threshold that I needed. And I am 0-2 by a combined, I think, three or four points. But here's the thing, Mike. I know, now I know. You, I just you're don't want fine. To. Yes. But you promised him he'd win. You did well, promise. I was, uh, look, I lie all the time. Um, it's one of promises my... Promises get crazy. You, you know how promises be. <laughs> promises be crazy. Um, that was naggy, right? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I know what it feels like to be 0-2. You obviously do. And a lot of <laughs> Thank people... You. Thank you. A lot of people listening um, are there. And for for every maybe happy, not as painfully as Mike, but right, they're but, there. But you're fine. You are really fine. We uh, one of my favorite things doing this show every single year are the people who are zero and four, zero and five, and then they come back and they win a championship um, because they don't give up and they keep going. Zero and two is zero and two is just yes. I mean, especially with your rosters fine. Yeah, it's it's not. It's certainly not a death blow at all. It just it's a- the the. the Back to back Monday night catastrophes have really, really squashed my spirit. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, it was funny, you know, Cardinals are two and zero, and there's a lot of local radio talking about Kyler. And this morning they were just talking about you know nine touchdowns within with two games uh, in the first two games, and then they're like, "Now you got 15 more games. You got to show. You got to prove it." I'm like, 15 more." <laughs> That's crazy. Like, we get the extra game this year. It's a long season. That's true. Um, 
which means that your your soul has so much oh, crap. More tilting pain tilting to left go through. Yeah. Uh, Twitter at the FFL. oh no what you got news? I have another Monday night player. <laughs> oh, you looked at your schedule. You got another Monday night game. What's yeah. next week's Monday night game? Let us know who's not going to perform. It's Philadelphia versus Dallas. Oh, that's a Monday night game. Well, that's fun. And who it do you is. have? I have Devontae Smith. Oh, no. I like Devontae Smith. He's going to have a bad game? No. No, he'll have a great game. Just, just not, not enough. Just, <laughs> just, just not one enough. point short. <laughs> We've got a lot to talk about today. Where there's smoke, there's fire on the show. News and notes. It's a waiver show. We'll have our streaming quarterbacks for week three. And... We'll all get through this together, Mike. Uh, I got through it with Derrick Henry, so I was fine. But I mean, Ooh, we'll all get cool. through it together. As a just can I a, borrow him? Um, I honestly I had can plenty I of some of those. Points? I had plenty of points to go around. You could have <laughs> taken. I just need two. Yeah, I, they're all yours. Stop being so greedy. The fantasy football community join the foot dot com. You can check that out. Get a bonus weekly show, premium perks access to the forums and to our uh, Discord channels. In fact, we just opened up a public free Discord, which uh, you can get to via our website. So if you go to thefantasyfootballers.com, look in the upper right, there'll be a Discord icon. If you use Discord, you know what we're talking about, and you can jump in there and chat with some more community members. And then if you want access to all the channels, you can support the show at jointhefoot.com. So... Other takeaways from last night's uh, recap. Well, Aaron Rodgers got it figured out. I mean, yes. 22 for 27. He only had five incompletions in the entire game. I believe they were all to Marquez. I mean, that mm, if you sure. look at Marquez, he was he was a goose. Yeah. And there were two bombs to him that didn't work. There was a slant where he was With, so wide open. That was, okay, I thought we were going to say that was somehow MVS's fault. No, he was so open, and it was just a bad throw by Rodgers. But I really feel like the other incompletion was Devontae Adams in the yes. end zone. Uh, Devontae Adams in the end zone was one, and the other four were all MVS. He was four targets, zero receptions. That sounds like what MVS's career fantasy situation has been like, which is you never know. Yeah. Uh, but Aaron Jones was the show last night. Holy four crap. touchdowns. Ran for 67 yards, but ended up with 48 through the air, four total touchdowns. Robert Tunyon came back uh, around, which, you know, hopefully you hung on to him and just threw out last week. Mm -hmm. Devontae Adams, 121 receiving yards. Yet to get into the end zone this year, I believe. Uh, on the other side. Oh, the Hawkness monster. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, TJ Hawkinson, eight. Eight receptions, 66 yards, one touchdown on nine targets. So two straight huge weeks for Hawkinson. Quintez Cephas, I thought he was interesting this week. Four for 63 and a touchdown. Uh, but the, the running backs, especially Jamal Williams, not good. Not Yeah, I mean, I don't, Swift really wasn't that much better on a uh, – Per touch basis? Per, per touch. And just it's for fantasy. I mean, they they destroyed each other. I mean, you had eight carries for Swift for 37 yards, seven carries for Jamal for 25 yards. The 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 only difference in fantasy points for between the two of them, that final drive that where it was the game was done and they're just, you know, we're putting in the old effort at the end and it, and it turned into at least two receptions for DeAndre Swift. So without that drive, they're exactly the same, uh, just production and fantasy wise at the so end of the game. I do have one fantasy question moving forward from this game before we move on. AJ Dillon. I mean, he hasn't really looked very good. Not a lot of opportunities. Not involved in the passing game. Five for eighteen. Is this? Is he moved into pure insurance running back as opposed to? I think we hoped that maybe he was a spot start, a Jamal Williams-esque type of start. Yeah, I, th I think there, there was a small glimmer of hope for that, that you could start both players. But, yeah, I mean, the the, the game plan today showed that even when they were up and they were up big, I mean, it, it wasn't until the very end that you saw uh, Dylan basically in for a drive. This is the Aaron Jones show, and I cannot fathom starting uh, A.J. Dillon without a an injury to Aaron Jones. There will be... 
a, a, you know, a, a couple of weeks over the course of the season where he ends up getting a touchdown, even when Aaron Jones is active, but not in any kind of reliable, startable way. So he is purely an insurance back for injury. I think he could, over the course of the season, work the, work the way up. Like, two games in for the Green Bay Packers, and we're really one game in because week one is just you throw that completely into the garbage. So you're not dropping Dylan. You're going to wait and see. You would drop him? Yeah, I would. And if, uh, not if I, I had not. not if I had Aaron Jones, but at, roster spots, you need him right now. Like, I'd put him in the category of, like, you always want to pick up insurance backs in case somebody gets hurt. But I haven't seen – he doesn't look that good to me, and then he's not getting goal line. So I would certainly be happy to drop him versus just kind of hoping. Jason, where do you stand on that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a matter of who's on the waiver. I, I would pick A.J. Dill. He would be on the waiver list of a pickup, but certainly someone that I would be willing to drop for more valuable running backs that could get in. You know, if, if you're staring down the situation where you're like, okay, uh, Sony Michelle's out there who is mostly an insurance back. I, I would definitely drop A.J. Dillon to grab someone like that or a James White um, I would put those players ahead of you yeah. Know, okay, Adrian that's Hill. fair. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. <laughs> that just gets that's, that gets hyped. Yeah, some good music there, Mike. Uh, all right, we're looking at surprise performances and asking: Is this smoke? Is this fire? Let's start with Score Darrell Patterson. Um, Falcons running back, wide receiver. Run, running back. He is a running back on the It's ironic chart. that you're saying that because his, all his production was the but receiving. He's, but well, he's that, running back eligible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it, worth noting in Yahoo, he is running back and wide receiver eligible. Is that on Sleeper last time I saw it too? Oh, fantastic. He was the running back five this past week. Had a goal line touchdown, had six targets, had five catches, 58 and a touchdown. From watching Atlanta thus far this year, they don't – they need him, which is something that is not a um, a feather in the cap of an a NFL team to need court Daryl Patterson week to week. But they don't – I mean, Russell Gage has done nothing. Um, they don't have Julio anymore. Calvin Ridley doesn't seem to be able to get a lot of deep looks right now. This is a tough one for me, though, to say fire to Cordero Patterson when, you know, he limps into the end zone, ends up with the – I think I'm going to say smoke. I, I'm going to say fire, and let me let me explain why. Uh, I think there is real fire here. I think you should pick up Cordero Patterson. Um, he's not someone that certainly you have to, you have to start, but in a pinch, you can obviously as the running back five this last week, didn't do anything on the ground, but you wouldn't expect anybody to have success against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the ground. Nobody has in a year and a half. I mean, that D line is just great. Um, but then through the air was fantastic. Um, and it, over the two games, I can't remember how many times I've been watching the film and thought. Man, he just looks so much better than Mike Davis. If you look at the running back uh, opportunity count between Mike Davis and Cordero Patterson, Cordero got much more involved this week in that timeshare. Um, so he's already encroaching on Mike Davis. And when I look at what Arthur Smith wants to do, I, I that you know they want to establish the run. Um, and I think Cordero's their best running back. And he can get involved in, in the receiving game. So he's a spot start who I think if the opportunity came on the insurance level, he's he's got juice. He looks good on, a, on almost every play. Now, the upcoming schedule, the Giants aren't uh, an easy run D and then the Washington football team the week after. So um, Yeah, I was going to bring up that Brooks. He sent across the Mike Davis line. Davis had more total catches in the game. Yes, he also seven. ran much better. He was 9 for 38. Cordero was 7 for 11. Yeah. Mike, where do you weigh in? I am I am on the fire side that Patterson should be picked up as looking towards the future. The entire argument, fantasy football-wise, for Mike Davis being a an okay draft pick in the range he was going was there is nobody else on this roster, at least that we can foresee, that can overtake Mike Davis. Patterson could. Like... I'm not saying that he will, but Patterson has the ability to surpass him, at least on uh, when it comes to the receiving part of the game. They gave him a 
uh, Wildcat quarterback snap. Now it turned in – this was like on the five or right next to the goal line. It unfortunately turned into a fumble. There was a, a miscommunication between Patterson and Mike Davis. But Patterson's part of the game plan. So I think that he is a a, a solid stash where I, I probably wouldn't be spot starting him, but I think that he is a player that – when you're looking towards the the future, having him on your bench is a good play. I uh, yeah, we said to pick him up last week on the yeah. wa- on the waiver show. So and th- like the snaps, look, th- you need th- bodies at running back. So Patterson is definitely worth paying attention to. I just don't know. I guess I'm having a hard time defining what fire and smoke means on this one. It doesn't mean picking him up, I right? It doesn't it means, mean? I think it just means is is he for real? Or is this completely a mirage where he's not going to be involved? This was just he got the two touchdowns and and he's not really a part of the offense. He is. He is. It's what Mike said. He is a part of their game plan. You know, they had two carries inside the 10. Both went to Patterson. Um, he's, I think, an important part of the offense. It's not to say he's a superstar, but it's not. This isn't a smoke performance where uh, just a mirage. Henry Ruggs, Raiders wide receiver, seven targets against Pittsburgh, five for one, thirteen and one, was the wide receiver eight on the week. I mean, this was Henry Ruggs delivering on all of the potential. Derek Carr has always been a great deep ball thrower. Found him late in this game, another walk off. I mean, he, Derek Carr is trying to do the walk off uh, bomb touchdown every week. Miami, Los Angeles. Uh, that would be the Chargers, and then Chicago the next three weeks. He's been targeted on 16.9% of his routes so far this season. Smoke. <laughs> yeah, he's it's smoke for me as well. You have uh, – Brian Edwards had a touchdown in this game. It ended up getting called back, and then Brian Edwards had another big catch like right after that. That also got called back. They are sp- splitting time. It – between uh, Edwards and Henry Ruggs. That, that wasn't me saying, I want Edwards over Henry Ruggs. I was saying the production easily could have gone to Brian Edwards this year, this week. And because it did, it just got called back on a penalty. Ruggs came through with the deep shot this week. And he, he's not he's not a terrible play, but he, uh, he I haven't like elevated him in a tier or anything in, in my rankings or where I'd prefer to start somebody. Yeah, I mean, you're going to need the big play, which which you got in this game, and you're going to get a handful of times. Love him in best ball because that's the type of player he is. Um, you know, you take away the 61-yard bomb, which you can't, but if if he doesn't connect on the deep ball, then, you know, four for 52 is – you're, you're disappointed. So I, I think that on a – I think this is mostly smoke. It's not something that I think will happen on a week-by-week basis, and he is someone you could – start in the hopes like like Jalen Rager I, I, right. you know you could start him in the hopes he had a bomb touchdown that was called back because he just barely stepped out of bounds um you'd be looking at these two players pretty similarly McCall uh, Hardman's another example exactly and through two games Ruggs has a 13 percent target share Hardman's at 17 percent through two games but if you don't get the big play yeah so I I, I think this is mostly smoke and you know who the number one target is yeah 29 percent <laughs> target share Darren Waller, Waller. K.J. Osborne, Vikings wide receiver in week one, had nine targets, seven for 76. In week two, six targets, five for 91. Uh, Through two games, the Minnesota Vikings have given up a lot of points. They have also given up a lot of yards to wide receivers. Uh, That that is my way of saying this offense is probably going to have to throw the ball the rest of the year, and Osborne looks like a – Russell Gage of last year type of pickup to me where you could probably start him in a PPR format and not get goosed ever. There are just things I love and things I hate so much. I have a real hard time with KJ Osborne. I love that he is a second year player who has looked good on the field um, and is involved. He's he's running enough routes. He's on the field enough. Um, Do you but, remember when he dunked but, on Hakeem Olajuwon? <laughs> oh! Oh, man, that was one of the best plays of all time. <laughs> Kevin Johnson. Super deep. Yes. K- KJ, but I'm going to commit to it. Um, but the problem is I just – like like he's really, really good. And, and if Adam Thielen, you know, as the course of the season goes on, starts aging out, you've got this opportunity ahead of him. So there's so many things I like. But at, in the end, 
this is a team that desires to run the ball more and this is their wide receiver three like Andy you've talked about over the last couple of years sometimes you have a hard time really buying into the wide receiver two on a team you want that one you want that alpha the three is like <laughs> just <laughs> ooh, Ster it can Sterling Shepard over KJ Osborne rest of the season yes yeah okay uh, I would call this a, a like this is a fire I don't know that I can cook with this fire, but Wait, I can definitely simmer. I can warm my. Oh yeah, yeah. You simmer in I, here. You got like you got a good soup. Absolutely. Yeah, I can get the soup. You started up. the year with just cold. Yeah. You know, We're working kindling. our way. There up. was nothing warm about. Yeah. KJ Osborne. You're not just smoking the water. You're boiling the water. Yeah. But, but you know, it's the big bubbles or little bubbles. Little bubbles. The simmer. And because this the, the sample is so small, but. I don't like seeing the eighty-one percent of snaps drop to fifty-nine. There you go. Where if that had if it had held, conk, you know, conk. if it had held in, in the seventy range, I would I would increase the flame size over here. But okay, I, there, so there, smoke. There, That's it, a smoke. Is smoking it, simmer? Yeah. I, sorry, KJ. All right, that was where there's smoke. There's fire, which we struggled through. Presented by <laughs> Traeger Grills. Put a Traeger wood pellet grill on your starting lineup. Make every game day more delicious. Head to Traeger.com slash footballers to discover just how simple wood-fired co cooking can be. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, I'm going to blitz the news so we can get into waivers here. Daryl Henderson. Rib cartilage injury. Rams are optimistic. We'll be checking in on him Friday. It's going to be a watch him all week. Yeah, and it's a this is tough. Like this is a tough situation because you can play through this pain, but when you have it, when you have that, are you going to get the ninety plus percent of the work again, or does Sony Michelle get more involved? This is a <laughs> this is not great for fantasy. Uh, forty nine er running back news. Kyle Shanahan said Elijah Mitchell day to day. All right, Jamichael Hasty. High ankle sprain. He will be out for a while. You also have the concussion protocol for Trey Sermon. And then the team uh, picked up Jaquez Patrick this morning. Now, they signed him off the Bengals practice squad. So what that means is that he has to be on the 53-man roster, and he will count against the 53-man roster for at really? least three weeks. So I, this is not a go pick up Jaquez uh, Patrick, but this is – Bad news for if you're hoping that these ancillary running backs, all these, this group of running backs that all got injured are like, ah, maybe they'll be okay. Eh, you know, it's probably going to be a couple weeks. So ho hopefully Elijah is out there. Yeah, I expect Elijah to be out there. But Hasty won't be. Sermon, this is seems like Sermon might miss a week. That's, that, that's where I read into it. And, and Trenton Cannon is still there. I mean, he got, what, like a, a carry last week? Yeah, I... um. I know the different – people are worried about Elijah. But if he plays this week, he should be the guy. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm not worried at all. I, I loved what I saw last week uh, other than the fantasy finish. Like, uh, the process was sound. He had all the carries. He was the, the main running back there. He even had the touchdown that was called back. I, I'm not worried if he's active. Man, that was a miracle callback, too, because he was in the pile, underneath the pile, and they called it a touchdown on the field, and you never have a camera angle. And they found and somehow one they found picture. it through when, like three legs. When they showed the picture of like, oh yeah, this shows that he didn't cross the goal line. I couldn't. I could not. I was like, where is the ball? Where is the? They had to circle him, and then it's like, oh my gosh, those are geniuses finding this photo. Josh Jacobs is quote very questionable to face the Dolphins in Week Three, so you're not playing a Raiders running back. Correct. Derek Carr underwent an MRI. John Gruden said he thinks he's going to be able to play. That's what I think, too. Yeah, he'll play. Deontay Johnson, not a serious injury on Phew. the last play of the game. Uh, we're going to monitor the practice reports. I don't have anything else to go on for whether he's going to be active. I think there's some optimism that he'll be available, but he could miss a week as well. Jarvis Landry is week to week due to an MCL sprain. I wouldn't expect him back out there. And they're expecting Beckham to make his debut in, oh. week, in week three, at least according to Mary Kay Cabot of Cleveland.com. So all that vague tweeting was him saying like maybe the cheetah week three? The cheetah was in the stall like healing. Oh, maybe. And they're going to let the cheetah out to race the greyhounds if you saw the picture. 
Uh, I would put my money on the cheetah. Yeah, right. Me just, too. just just saying. If you ever come across a situation mm -hmm. where there are greyhounds racing a cheetah, yeah. I'd put it all on the I cheetah. I don't know that the greyhounds are gonna finish the race. <laughs> <laughs> well, that oh, that's that's a good point. Maybe one of the greyhounds doesn't finish, but then the cheetah also wouldn't finish. Is this your way of saying Beckham hurt Landry? No, I was saying oh, that okay. the cheetah okay. would eat one of the greyhounds. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um what was crazy is Peoples Jones, Schwartz, Landry, all I mean, they did nothing in this game. They they won the game. Well Landry didn't play the game. He he started it though. My point is that like somehow they, they won this game and it was it was Hooper, Harrison Bryant, um you know, in Joku. Right. It was like Beckham has a chance to get some targets here yes. in his debut. Like he's probably flex worthy. Yes, I, I agree. And and I know this sounds crazy, but there will be a league or two. This is a waiver show where he will be out. He he was dropped because someone had to drop him being out multiple weeks and they got Not in my league, Jason. Mm -hmm. Sure, just go check. Andy Dalton, MRI con uh, confirmed the nature of the injury to be a bone bruise. Week three uncertain. What? So, this is what we're saying it's uncertain? That is what they are saying. Come on. Just rule him out. <laughs> Stop it. He's not playing. Nico Collins expected to miss three or four weeks due to injury. That's the wider series for the Texans. Whatever. I mean, you're not playing Chris Conley on Thursday night with Davis Mills. Brandon Cooks is even a – I mean, you close your eyes and start him. Yeah, Brandon Cooks uh, is, is the is the most difficult start of all time. And when you're cooking with the general, it's well, – Because uh, he doesn't cook. Right, exactly. It just throws some milk on his food and says, <laughs> it's done. Zach Ertz, COVID list. Now he's vaccinated, so he could potentially be back. They're the Monday night game. Yeah. So what's hard there is like if you're looking at Dallas Goddard and saying, ooh, he could be a great start this week because Ertz will be out, you don't know. Yeah. Going into Monday. At least I, I do Goddard is probably one of those players if you have him, there's there's most likely not a better option, even if Ertz is active. So you're probably just gonna still be sticking with him. He was an inch away from a touchdown this last week as well. I have that situation, though. I have oh, no, you do? I have Noah Fant and Dallas Goddard. Well, either way, I'd be starting Fant. Wouldn't you? Not if I knew Goddard against Dallas on Monday night was all alone at the tight end position. No. I'd be playing Goddard. Yeah, that's fair. Um, that was today's news and notes brought to you, as always, by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Download Sleeper, join their breaking alerts channel. It's faster than every other source. Yeah. And Foot Clan, before we get into these waivers, I want to thank today's sponsor, Simply Safe. Fellas, a big news from our favorite home security company. Simply Safe has just launched their new wireless outdoor security camera. That's right. Simply you hear that, Safe. Brooksy? Yeah. And now you got the wireless camera out there. The system that US News and World Report names the best home security system of 2021. It just got even better. It's an ultra-wide, 140-degree field of view, so you can keep watch over your entire yard. It has a 1080p HD resolution with eight times zoom. It means you can zoom in and clearly see things like faces, license plates. You're going to get the evidence you need. Simply Safe is keeping you safe. They've been a longtime sponsor of the show. They've been a longtime uh, security provider of our goodies here at, yeah. at uh, the Fantasy Footballers headquarters, so we... Not only are they a sponsor of the show, we personally use them. We personally endorse them. They've been great. To learn more about the exciting new Simply Safe wireless outdoor security camera, visit simplysafe.com slash footballers. What's more, Simply Safe is celebrating this new camera by offering 20% off your entire new system and your first month of monitoring service free when you enroll in interactive monitoring. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash footballers. And we want to thank Head & Shoulders, because Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology is never, never not, not working. working. To give you a hundred up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. I used it this morning. Right now, I'm not washing my hair. Still working. Oh. It's never not <laughs> working. working. And uh, we're never not working. Make sure you, you uh, check out Thursday's show, where we do our never not working uh Segment? segment we're going to talk through some of the players that late in the week you want to stash and grab and do that ir switch plug someone in uh, so 
thank you, Head and Shoulders, for helping us out there. Regular use of Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield technology provides continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working. With never head and, not, not working. working. With Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at Walmart.com. Put me in, coach. The thing about the security system is it protects you from without, right? Like from everybody beyond here. But Al is, he works here. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether it can protect us from him taking stuff. Well, we have cameras that we could see him. Oh, yeah, he did that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, waiver time. Uh, new article on the website. Uh, you can check that out. Matt DeSorbo over there looking at data since 2015. TheFantasyFootballers.com. Check it out. Wide receiver waiver pickups. We always put in the top drop candidates from Twitter and IG. So this is who you are thinking about dropping because obviously if you're going to pick somebody up off the waiver wire, you're going to have to make a decision on letting somebody go. And, you know, two weeks into the year, tomorrow we have an Unsolved Mysteries segment. We're going to look at some of the trends or could be trends mm -hmm. that are forming in the NFL. Week two, you got two weeks in the book, and you have to make some decisions. Yes, you do. Um, because some of these players you have hopes for, but can you? Do you have the luxury of not starting somebody else? You know, a lot of you know we're in a two flex league. You got to put somebody in your lineup. You can't just wait. So one of the questions: Do you drop Jacoby Myers or Nelson Aguilar? I looked at this game last week. New England dominated. Mac Jones scored eight fantasy points. This offense is still going – we know it's a running game, Damian Harris. We know it's the defense. I would expect more often than not, Mac Jones is under 20 fantasy points. So if you take that and you distribute it amongst big signings like Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne and Jacoby Myers and Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith, like you're kind of getting passing game disappointment across the board there. Are you willing to let those guys go? I am 100% willing to let them go. I mean, if you look at what a big game from Mac Jones is going to be – his big games are going to be 250 and two. Um, and, and at that point, you better hope the tight ends weren't involved. You know, it's just one of those things where uh, next year, next year, maybe these guys are, are good. You want to keep an eye on them. But I, I don't think that there's upside in this offense in the passing game enough for me to roster and start these players over. Take Like, for instance, you know, a KJ Osborne, who I'm not too excited about. There is hope for some kind of a breakout there. Um I, I, I just don't see that being able to be possible with rookie Mac Jones. Agreed. And the, that yardage toll you throw out, you can slot 30-plus yards to James White. Like That's, that's true. It's an automatic thing that's going to happen every single week. Marquez Callaway. Drop. Yeah, he's gone. Uh, big names, Brandon Ayuk. This is a tough one. I'm not dropping him. I, I So, oh man, I wow. look, obviously – Listen, I, I, I obviously love Brandon Ayuk's talent, uh, his ability to break out, and I, I like the offense with Kyle Shanahan and, and all these superlatives. The, there's a, a plus side and a, and a, and a minus side, and, and in general, I would not drop him because I just talked about K.J. Osborne has the ability to break out. Ayuk still does. He was, you know, he's coming back from the hamstring issue. He still only played 54% of the snaps. Now, take that either way. That, that That's just not enough to be involved to get into this offense, to get into a rhythm and have enough targets, drop him. Or you could say, look, last year, even in his rookie season, even when Debo and, and Kittle were healthy, he never played fewer than 72% of the snaps. Most of the year, he was playing 90% of the snaps. So it's just, is that going, if that changes and all of a sudden, okay, now we're back to Ayuk playing and being a, a regular part of this offense, he's going to be more valuable than wide receivers on the waiver wire. I would hold him. But I, I don't blame you if you think this is just how the offense is now and I want to move on. Because sometimes holding on to a guy, if you think you're going to drop him in two weeks, then you wasted a roster spot for two weeks. Yeah, I guess part of the question is could he ever be above the third option for Jimmy G or Trey Lance? And you talked yesterday when you were watching the game about – because I know you went play-by-play -play through the entire 49er game. We watched some of that together. You know, does does Trey Lance represent a different upside for Ayuk? No. Or, or just a tr – Downside. Downside. Yeah. Because of volume. Mm -hmm. See, I could see upside from a standpoint of when, when Jimmy G dropped back to drop, 
Uh, drop, drop, back, back, drop, <laughs> drop, 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 hit. <laughs> when he dropped back to pass, I mean, it was just like, <laughs> where, where, where's Debo? Where's Debo? Um, whereas someone coming in different, he could target Ayuk as the number one guy. Uh, and then you've got Kittle as well. That's a, that whole team dealing with the injuries, the potential transition at, at, at quarterback. Uh, I just don't know. They're two and zero. I mean, yeah, it's tough. They're but not transitioning the quarterback when they win. If you have Ayuk and you want out, you got to trade him. That's that's probably that's the fair. way to go. Someone out in your league will take Brandon Ayuk and figure out who had him last year. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. <laughs> they know the sweetness. Elijah Moore, cut him, right? Yes. Bye. I think you cut him. Redraft, you cut him. Uh, Robbie Anderson, you don't cut Robbie no, Anderson. No, no, you do not cut Robbie. Um, he is someone that you could throw on a flex play. He had two deep targets this last game that just didn't didn't connect. Uh, multiple, He's going to have his game. Absolutely. And and uh, the air yards were there this, this last week, even with um, it be clearly being the DJ Moore show. All right, so some waiver wire pickups. A lot of these are higher rostered, at least with the numbers that we see, but please check your waiver wire. Mm -hmm. I have talked to enough people this week that have picked up Justin Herbert off the waiver wire that have picked up you know, a lot of different options that you don't expect. So just check it. Marvin Jones had 11 targets. I believe he's the he was the wide receiver 19 two straight weeks. If you believe that Trevor Lawrence is going to continue to improve over the course of the year, he has Arizona this week. Marvin Jones needs to be played. Do we have an update on LaVisca Chenault? He's going to be I, all right. Is he okay? Yeah, they're, they're, he's going to play this week. Right. Uh, the likelihood, high likelihood. Uh, that didn't mean anything last week, though. Oh, yeah, they <laughs> did lose O'Shaughnessy to a high ankle sprain. And yes. he was, he, he's he not was good, but he was involved. Darnell Mooney, eight targets last week, you six for 66, 11 catches in two weeks. He's, he's being you, – you can see the difference in last year's role and this year's role through two games already. And if Justin Fields takes over, the offense starts moving, you could continue to see some success there. Sterling Shepard is 63% rostered, 10 targets, 9 for 94. Look, you should roster him. I think you should roster him and you should play him at the very least until Evan Ingram comes back. He's he is This could be this week. Uh, sure, yeah, it could be. Um but This is the Galladay week, by the way. Oh, get ready. Wheel. Yeah, I think it's happening. He had so many Targets that just went slightly awry, including end zone targets last week. I think you're going to see a Galladay breakout week against Atlanta. I, w I just, I mean, if the matchup is right. I just wonder if you can, because like he's not a separator, and Daniel Jones needs a separator. Uh, whereas you know Sterling Shepard is a route runner, get open, and then Daniel Jones hits him open. Uh, I feel like every single pass that went to Galladay was like Galladay's grabbing that rebound. <laughs> you know, it's like he's boxing out trying to trying to grab it. Henry Ruggs, we talked about him. If you need to take a shot, you're taking a shot on a deep play. Some of the uh, other names to bring up. What about uh, Denver's Zach Pascal, which is uh, Tim hey, Patrick? Hey, I'm talking about Fireball. Oh, Fireball, fireball Jones? Jones? Yes. Uh, Tim Patrick is 34% rostered, had a touchdown, 74% of snaps. I still think you should pick him up, and you can, you can flex him and hope. Yes, yeah, they can't run. They can't run the football. Like my I'll, here, here's a spoiler alert. Teddy Bridgewater is my stream of the week. Love it. They can't run. They he he's he's having some success fantasy wise because they're they're running through the air. Yeah, I mean he's he's clearly not the one. C Cortland Sutton said uh, <laughs> yeah. all your all your passes belong yes. to me. Um, but he is a solid wide receiver who's been good for a, a year and a half now for fantasy. Zach Pascal scored in three scored three times uh, over two weeks. Six targets, five for 38, and a touchdown. It seems like you are super dependent on a touchdown for Zach Pascal. Yeah, and if it is, in fact, uh, Jacob Eason this week, uh, the matchup is spectacular against Tennessee, but I would not be playing Pascal in that situation. I think I'm rising on this next guy, Rondell Moore. Oh, yeah. F for fantasy purposes. Like, I already, you know, we all like Rondell Moore, what he represents for the Cardinals' offense. But watching back through some plays – Watching some of these scramble drills, right? When when Kyler gets out of the pocket and he starts looking downfield, he found more, not just the big bomb, right? but even the previous week, he, he had a couple of ridiculous throws where he found more, which tells me more is getting to where he needs to get to. He's got so much shimmy, so much shake. And he can do 
even more. Hey oh Week one, 29% snap count. Week two, 46% snap count. Goodness he gracious. still was yeah, this... not on the field half of the game, and he's becoming more and more important to the offense. So th th this is the number one uh, He's waiver. my priority. He too. is the number one. Uh, that he, makes three of us. Even including uh, the running back position. Now, he's uh, not – available in half the leagues he's available in half the leagues hopefully this was a pickup we talked about last week hopefully he's already on your roster he was our stash alert um but th the point is not only does he look great as an electric rookie on a high-powered fast playing offense but he has not <laughs> you can see the path to more work yes it, did you guys see that and, and look more it's, more more it's it's 100 percent narrative and it destroyed us so far with uh with clyde but did you see the reports that uh, that Kyler sent the staff like video highlights of Rondale Moore? Oh, you're before saying the quarterback the draft. banging the table yes. for a player? Yes, Kyler was like, "Hey, you know this guy's pretty good." And we talked about uh, this next guy, An Emmanuel Sanders. Yes, twenty three percent rostered, and uh, go get him. Look, in the first week after seeing what took place and Beasley's involvement, I was a little on the fence. But watching the tape and seeing Sanders, like he should have had a lot more than two for forty eight. He should have had a lot Allen more. Allen missed him on a couple of really nice, like uh deep drag routes and his average depth of target is almost twenty yards. He's he's been, the deep guy. He also looks great on the field. He does not look old or washed at all. He's thirty four years old, not what I'm yeah. aiming for usually, but he looks outstanding. Some misses. Honestly, He's Robbie Anderson. He looks to me like sure. like he's got the ability to have the same kind of weekly output that Robbie Anderson has, and he's available in three quarters of the leagues out there. So yeah, I would absolutely pick him up. Nobody's, you know, he was the wide receiver sixty five week one, wide receiver sixty week two. This is not going to be a, a guy hard to get, but the behind the scenes metrics, not just fantasy finish of routes run, snap percentage, air yards, targets, they're all there, and it will hit soon. Running back drop candidates as we get into the running back pickups. Trey Sermon, I've seen that question a lot. I'm not dropping him. No, I'm See, not either. It, I'm scared with the – What with if the, you knew he was out for two weeks, right? So he's out two weeks, and you know Jeff Wilson's coming back week six to eight. If I knew he was out two weeks, and assuming I don't have an IR because that makes it easy, then, yeah, I, I guess I would cut him. Uh, Ronald Jones. <laughs> Probably have to wait. With Ronald, I mean, we. I was looking in the studio yesterday. Leonard Fournette, the snap count for Fournette is significant. It's like fifty-seven percent through two weeks. Now you, right. you know the benching. You know the benching is going to impact that. But is there is there hope for Ronald? There is hope because what we saw last year was plenty of bad games, plenty of benchings, plenty of nothings, and then a big monster performance. So. Um, this is why I was out on the whole backfield going into the season. Was you don't want to be living this life. I don't want to live this life. We have learned our lessons in the past. He's very, very difficult to say that you should cut him, though, because they're starting running backs or running backs that are going to be able to put up good weeks should all be rostered. This is a Brandon Ayuk trade him if you want to cut him situation. Package That's him right. with someone uh, and, and upgrade another player. That's right. Um 41% of snaps for him last week. Six for 27, three targets. It could get better for Ronald Jones. James Conner, A.J. Dillon. Man. Keep keep them in mind when I bring these names up and tell okay. me if you would cut them. Okay. Sonny Michelle is one of the bigger pickups. He's rostered in 49% of leagues. So Sonny Michelle. Uh, well, 10 for 46 last week after the injury. Was talking about it at the top in the news section. You have no idea what – we don't know yet if Daryl Henderson is going to play. I don't think you're going to know – until Sunday, if he's actually going to play. Then on top of that, it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where, yeah, Sony looked great. Yep. Running backs succeed when they play for Sean McVay. But against the Tampa Bay front, you should not project great things to happen. Uh, so Sony should be added uh, in, the, in the event that you do need a spot start and you're just really hoping for a bunch of volume over the weekend cause in, the, in the fact that uh, – in the event that Henderson is ruled out, but I'm not going like I'm not going hard in the paint here. I'm not burning a number one priority. I'm not unloading a bunch of fab to get Sony. James White 
if he's there, he's always good for a spot start at running back. Let's say you get an injury, you have a bye week. Yeah, I mean, he, he was, I believe he led the team in targets this last week. Um, James White is someone that should be rostered in 100% of yes, leagues. Yes, he should. He is unrostered in 50% of leagues, so absolutely pick him up. He was the running back 14 this last week, and that included a rushing touchdown, not a not a right. receiving touchdown. What about this next guy that gobbled 44% of <laughs> snaps? Oh. J.D. McKissick. Would That's you James White's cousin, right? <laughs> Would you pick him up? I got got. Uh, yes, you could pick him. I prefer James White to McKissick. Uh, the, when you look at what's happening in Washington, Gibson is starting to eat away at McKissick's routes, uh, on first and second down. Now the two minute drill. Yeah, that's, that's going to be all McKissick. I, I, I don't really see a world where that's changing this year. So he has, he has some value. You can't expect six targets to turn into five for 83 on a weekly basis. There, he had a incredible uh, deep shot towards the end of the game. But he's a he's a fine play in in a PPR league. If you win zero RB, he's he's someone you can't play, but he's not a priority for me this yeah, week. Yeah, he, he would be behind um, several other pickups for me. I'd rather have Cordero Patterson. Um, Agreed. I, I would rather have the guys we just mentioned, Sony and James White. Um, I, I see that in 40% of leagues – and. This is one where it's probably rostered, but oh my goodness, like uh, more than James White, more than any name. If if for some reason Tony Pollard is available in your league and check your check your waivers, yeah. then he would be ahead of... Is he of, the number one? Oh, he would be the number one over Rondell Moore because he's looking... Are you starting him every week? Exactly. I think he's got enough involvement. He's the rare... He's the, the, the Kareem Hunt type where he's the backup, but he is playable and... In the event that Zeke were to go down, you'd have a league winner. So Maybe he, a top five back. Yeah, he has to be uh, rushed. So I, I would take you know all of those types over J.D. McKissick um, because I do think J.D. McKissick's value comes in those uh, two-minute drill type offenses, which there happened to be a lot of against the the Giants last week, and, and his value soared. I don't necessarily know that that's going to keep happening, but it is possible that his involvement was due to the change at quarterback so he should be, you know, looked at. All right. What What are some other names of running back that we should bring up? Are you interested in Madison in, in case Cook sits? I doubt he sits. I doubt he sits as well, but he is one of those guys that if you should throw him on the bench throughout and see what happens throughout the week. Kenny Gainwell, Kenneth Gainwell yeah. uh, is another stash guy for me. Um, the, the, the offense in this game against 49ers for both sides – was just putrid. So many missed opportunities, missed touchdowns. The the Eagles should have won that game, but his involvement was still good. The total numbers looked bad, um, but the involvement percentage of 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 the of what little offense there was, I I do think he's a stash. What about Michael Carter? Eleven for fifty nine against New England, two for twenty nine through the air, had eleven fantasy points. Yeah, we saw the snaps go from twenty five percent to forty five percent. I think that the team is stash alert. Yes, Michael Carter has he's. Moved into that. We, he wasn't someone we liked in the draft season because we knew it would take some time, and people get frustrated with with draft picks, so they drop them. And Michael Carter, go check your waiver wire. But we're getting to that point where I think the team is seeing that Tevin Coleman sh should not be on the field if you want to have positive things happen for your football team. It will still be Michael Carter and uh, and Ty, but you saw. 14 opportunities you saw two carries inside the 10 for Michael Carter so he is becoming interesting now if you have an IR spot please add Jeff Wilson mm -hmm. yes uh, Jeff Wilson will have <laughs> every chance to be the majority back when yes. he returns from injury yes he will he has the adoration of the coaching staff and a history of being involved in the passing game and scrubs ahead of him right now and he had four top 10 running Did back you just weeks call last Eli week? missile a scrub yeah, I mean this. Eli, <laughs> yes, I did. I apologize to nothing. No, you apologize to nothing. That's right. <laughs> like, nothing. I'm so sorry. Like the nothing from from a never ending story. That's right. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Ty Dan pickups. Austin Hooper, five for forty. They need help in the passing game. They have Chicago this week. 
You could do worse than Austin Hooper. He's not going to goose you. They don't have enough pass catching options. Dalton Schultz, no. Yeah. Tyler Conklin, no. Do we have tight ends to pick up, Brooks? Not really. That's, that's why, why I'm learning. Well, that's why these names are here. What about Max Williams? You want to chase? He's a 0% rostered and just had 7 for 94 for Arizona. Max Williams at least gets the Jacksonville Jaguars where you could easily, uh, you know, throw all over him. But no, I'm not. I'm not. I, I want to bring up Pat Fryermuth because, oh. the, because the Muth was Luth. <laughs> Um, he had four. That's the only reason you want to bring it <laughs> that's up. It. That's he, the only reason. He did not do enough to no. warrant a, a a pickup. Absolutely, he did not. But the muth is luth, <laughs> and say it with me, people. You'll have fun. He watch luth. watch the Steelers game, and when Pat Fryer Muth gets luth, you're gonna enjoy it. Um, I, I do still think he is an exceptional talent, and over the course of his career, will be good. Uh, the, the but not over this the year. Well, I think over the course of the season, it could. I happen. would I would say so if Big Ben didn't look like Grandpa Ben. He's, I mean, he's, he's done. Are you playing Claypool or are you playing Fryer Muth? Claypool. Claypool. Deontay? Deontay. Juju? Well, Juju. Can't. But none of them are Lebron. Luth. Najee. I think I would play uh, – genuinely, I think I would play Fryer Muth over Ebron right now. That's only because the Ebron isn't no, rhymable with – I'm pretty sure that Pat started. Like, he had 59% of snaps. He's four is, for 36. We can't talk about him anymore. Ebron's getting faced Go pick out. up Jared Cook instead. Yes, Jared right. Cook. Go pick up Eric Ebron instead. No. Ebron, I mean, right, sorry, Ingram? Uh, Evan Ingram, not yes. Eric Ebron. Yes. Um, Jared Cook and Evan Ingram are the two pickups. Evan Ingram could play this week, and if he does, he is certainly in this landscape of of. Well, and Daniel Jones lover over there. D you the, talking about the quarterback the, four on the season? You bet I am, Mike. Well, let's not spoil anything here. Oh, um, yeah. I, 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 but Jared, Jared, Jared <laughs> Cook um, was disappointed to a lot of people. They picked him up, yeah. to stream him. Maybe they had, uh, you know, Mike Gesicki week one, and they're like, oh, let's let's go with Jared Cook, and he he disappointed. You guys are talking about yourselves, right? Well, I did actually go from uh, yes, exactly. The, okay, just that. making sure, but. Cook was fine for this level of garbage tight ends, and he had a touchdown call back. Don't don't just go, oh, that didn't work, and and pivot to. You know who else had a touchdown call back? Donald Parham. Oh, that's right, that's right, a long one. So the tight ends being used. I mean, considering the top ten involved uh, Foster Moreau, Max Williams, Jack Doyle, Ricky Seals Jones, Dawson Knox, they. Uh, it was it was a disappointing tight end. DJ Hawkinson. Yeah, Hawk man. I would that we we didn't really talk He's about that. He's looked great. That catch was great. If you have uh I mean we're only 2 weeks in, but I would go I would buy high on TJ Hawkinson if I, you could. I don't know that you can. I don't know that you can, but maybe you could. I Mark this, Andrews. Now, here's the big I'll question. Give me Hawkinson. Yeah, I would. If no, I, I, I agree. That's what I'm saying like maybe if, you could send Andrews and somebody if for you, Hawk. If you have Andrews or if you have Kittle I would. Oh, I know that. But that, so this is my you question. You could get to him you. for Kittle. This is my question to you. If you had George Kittle, would you go offer him for TJ Hawkinson right now? It's two weeks. Are we overreacting? I would rather have Hawkinson. I would rather have Hawkinson. Give me one more week. Okay. <laughs> but that's that answer is why you might be able to get him. Correct. Straight up. Correct. Uh, defensive streamers this week. Denver has the Jets. If you would like the Zach Wilson interception experience. This yes, is, please. Uh, oh, the Panthers. The, oh, my goodness. The Panthers defense on Thursday against Houston and General Mills. Prime time against a rookie and their defense. It's prime I, time for crime <clears throat> time. I was showing <laughs> Andy. Panthers going to do bad things. Yeah, over and over. I I, I believe that the Panthers, Panthers defense is for real. Yeah, you were watching the game yesterday and consistently four-man fronts were getting to the quarterback. My goodness, when I – Casting eyes upon Jameis in this game, not look, a pleasant visual. Look away. I mean, he makes getting sacked and throwing interceptions look worse than anybody else. I mean, I choose the positive. I, I, I choose that he makes him look more fun than anyone else because I really enjoy those <laughs> He's plays. like, um, <laughs> just falling like over. Like a figure skater. Just always falling over, triple, heaving. Triple Lutz. Cardinals take on Jacksonville. Yep. You could try to the, – the Cardinals this past week, if you want to know the the defensive story, like in week one, they were incredible against Tennessee. Shut down Derrick Henry, pressure, sacks. Bad, bad start in this Minnesota game, but they did get it fixed over the second half of this game. And the second half was a lot better on defense. So 
Jacksonville, opportunities yes. for turnovers, sacks. There's a lot to like there. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about Mike Zimmer coming off a loss. He's a good coach. He had the tape on Arizona. You had Kirk Cousins, a, a very veteran quarterback, coming out, getting rid of the ball quickly. This is Urban Meyer and rookie Trevor Lawrence. Yes. So, yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of sacks and sack fumbles. And, and the, the Raiders yeah. against Miami. Go ahead, Mike. That's all I was going to say. The, the, we need to make sure you mention the Raiders as a, as a streaming option against Miami, against probably Jacoby beef brisket for yeah set. yeah the waiver wire summary article by lauren carpenter is up on the website at, uh, pretty soon after this show if you need to get an update and summary of everything that we broke down let's talk quarterbacks full stream ahead well i said it earlier teddy bridgewater against the jets uh i like your two streamers a lot He's been okay. I mean, week two is the quarterback 10. Jets are allowing a 71% completion rate. They're the fourth worst defense grade-wise, and the the Broncos haven't been able to win on the ground enough. Like, you have the big Melvin Gordon run, but other than that, it's been kind of tough sledding, mm -hmm. and uh, Bridgewater has weapons. He's going to have Sutton and Patrick and Hamler and Fant, and he's going to do some, do some things to the Jets. Yeah, uh, my my streaming uh, start of the week is the New York Giants running back one, Daniel Jones. <laughs> oh man, um, who has been awesome. Uh, he had you know over twenty fantasy points both weeks, almost thirty this last week against the Washington Football Team. Um, if you use our Stream Finder tool uh, on the FantasyFootballers dot com. You could see that Atlanta is the 32nd best so far through <laughs> oh, two very weeks. Nice. Yeah, they're they're very good at at being bad, um, averaging 29.1 fantasy points allowed. You saw Jalen Hurts run all day on them, uh, and I think Daniel Jones will run all night on them. Yeah, I like it. And the name I'm about to bring up, you be probably wondering why have we not talked about him yet? But I want to say, when if it's just this is a one week thing, I would prefer Daniel Jones. But Justin Fields needs to be picked up. He he's already uh, you know pretty highly rostered. Still coming out of the draft season, the matchup against Cleveland it's not my favorite. But I went back and I watched all of the Justin Fields snaps. He played much better than his stat line. You had Allen Robinson dropped a touchdown. You had uh, Darnell Mooney dropped a, a twenty to thirty yard uh, pass. It hit him in the hands. Justin Fields had a run where he caught the edge and he just stepped out of bounds and he might have been able to get into the end zone had that not happened. He looked he he made some real stupid rookie mistakes. I'm not I'm not saying that won't happen. But Fields is going to run 10 attempts in a limited amount of game time. Now they get to fully prepare cuz I believe that the Chicago Bears are not preparing like Andy Dalton may show up on a horse uh, on Sunday and say, I'm taking us to victory. It's going to be Justin Fields. I'm projecting that Justin Fields will be the starting quarterback moving forward for the Chicago Bears. So he needs to be picked up. Based on mobility alone, he has top 12 upside, and he looked fantastic at the preseason. Make sure you prioritize getting him on your roster. What do fantasy players do with the back-to-back -back quarterback 24? Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, I've a lot of the questions I've been receiving about Tannehill are about that. And my suggestion is is hold. Week one, with similar to the Packers, I'm throwing that out for the Titans. This past week, they they ended up having to come from, from behind, but and Henry was the one who did that. AJ Brown was terrible. Like AJ Brown had I think four drops. Four that I saw, and then Julio also had the touchdown taken back. I mean, you AJ Brown is not dropping four passes on a weekly basis you you give just him three you just give, normally three you give him he does have a drop problem but AJ Brown is better than that so I'm sticking with Ryan Tannehill unless like if you want to play Daniel Jones this week over Tannehill I would do that yeah but would you drop Tannehill to do it I may, personally maybe for Daniel Jones yeah I mean you, you might have to do that versus rostering yeah, two quarterbacks. I might personally I will grab Ryan Tannehill off of the waiver wire and play him over all of these options. Really, I think he is uh, he is fine. 
it's a well coached team. And if you watch it, I mean, Julio had a touchdown. Yeah. But Mike, he, he, to your chagrin, the weird heel being slightly out of bounds is off. And AJ Brown dropped so many passes. Uh, Tannehill is going to be fine. I'm not going to overreact from um, a dismantling in week one and some drops and border problems. They are fourth in the NFL in drop passes as a team right now, and obviously they're an efficient offense, so you drop a few, Julio you're losing everything. Julio looked great. Yeah, he like, did. So we've at least checked that box. We don't have to worry about old man about Julio. Tulio? Tulio. Oh, it's so weird, man. Every single time A.J. <laughs> Brown catches the ball, it's like, Julio, wait, why are you 11? You should have given your number to Julio out of respect. Yeah, it didn't happen. He's number two now. Yeah, Tulio Jones. But, yeah, so – Julio showed to me that Ryan Tannehill is going to be absolutely fine. Yeah, you just need to wait for that big game, but hopefully it's this week. If you haven't checked it out, as we close things out, we did share a very cool video on YouTube, some behind the scenes of our League of Record draft party. We want to thank Traeger Grills for hosting that mm -hmm. Um the food portion of the draft was Holy burnt ends. Yeah, it was. Oh my goodness! We had a hard time deciding one thing we liked more. Oh, Ooh. it's it's burnt ends. Uh, that, pro pro tip: I was thinking about this earlier but because the brisket was great and the pork was great. We were talking about the water, you know, on the on the grill whether yes. it was simmering and uh, just pr pro tip that we got from Traeger: uh, super smoke. Put the super smoke on with a tray of water. And use the smoked water to fill up your ice cube tray for smoked. Ooh, Ooh yeah. The smoked water? For, yeah, oh for my smoked gosh. ice. Um, nice deep purple. Nice loves cocktail. Traeger.com slash footballers. Head over there. And uh, we also want to thank Pristine Auction. You can check out their hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions, including a very large one, which is a Derrick Henry signed jersey. That jersey, um, you don't have to pay extra for shipping on that, even though it's 5XL. Derrick Henry. Uh, 62 bucks ends tonight. Use the code BALLERS for a $10 credit. Unsolved Mysteries on tomorrow's episode of the podcast where we look at some trends forming. It'll be a fun show. So you should, you should listen to it. Listen to it. Good luck on the waiver wire. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.